Larry joins us, had another great call, as always. But when they headed for home and always dreaming started to surge ahead, it, it, you knew it wasn't going to be a photo finish. Larry, good morning. Roger Wyland, Chris Honorado in Albany. How are you today? Good, guys. How are you? Sorry I'm a little late, but it's good to uh, be on with you. No, we, we appreciate. And uh, what, how, was, how did you feel? Your, I mean, when they, when they turned for home, you almost knew pretty soon it was going to be a clear-cut winner here. Yeah, it looked pretty good when they turned for home. And, uh, you know, you, you, you kind of hope for that. Uh, the day before in the Kentucky Oaks, the, the pace fell apart and there was horses coming from everywhere on the outside or the inside. And, and I was talking to the track announcer at Churchill, Travis Stone, and we both said, let's hope the Derby doesn't end up like that. So uh, we were we were pretty happy when they were coming down the stretch that there was not a, a whole lot of movement going on. It just makes things... Uh, a little bit easier. Twenty horses on a sloppy track is tough enough as it is. Yeah, I was going to say, how much did the slot play uh, a, a role in, like, who came in second and third? I mean, I mean, those two horses, I don't think uh, anybody had certainly winning. And and looking at Lee was what the the rail horse, and uh, yeah, how much of the the slop and all of that play a factor in the outcome? I don't. I don't think you can you can really tell. A lot of it has to do with you know the pace of the race and. And looking at Lee got a perfect trip. Everybody says the one hole is terrible, which it is. But unless you're a come from behind type, then it doesn't bother you at all. You're able to save all the ground, and it was a perfect ride by Corey Lannery, just riding the fence and, and coming through. And when you're going a mile and a quarter, being able to save ground certainly helps. And, and that horse, uh, you know, maybe he was moved up by the mud, or maybe he was just helped by the fact that the pace was was honest enough, and, and he's a a legitimate strong closer so uh it, it's tough to tell how you know the wet conditions played a role into into who finished second or third hey larry chris Honorado up here with roger as well uh thanks for taking the time with us i love your candor on on twitter and i'm going to go back to something you tweeted but you know the days run together i can't r- remember if it was saturday night or, or sunday morning but anyway it was in regards to you grabbing a drink after the race and and we've heard so many stories about the pressure that comes along with calling these races when you are finished with the with the Kentucky Derby what does Larry Colmas sit down with to drink well uh they usually have some wine in the NBC trailer so I I, I did go for that because that was the closest thing available and <laughs> and as soon as we got to, back to the hotel uh I, I went right since we're in Kentucky I went right for some bourbon there you go <laughs> the, the Woodford Reserve double oaks was what I was drinking <laughs> Larry you have any thoughts on on whether you think uh, always dreaming now can can continue and get a win in the preakness and maybe set up the the triple crown possibilities we always talk about in the Whatever the year is, no matter who wins it, it's always all right. Is this horse going to be good enough? Yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously, you think he is because he he won the Kentucky Derby with authority, and I and I certainly do think that he's got a a major chance at, at winning the Preakness. And and I, I'm pretty sure in every interview I've ever done in the the days after the Kentucky Derby, when someone says, "Can this horse win the Preakness?" I've always said yes. Uh, so it's not going to change with always dreaming. The the only time I've ever said no was if when someone asked me if American Pharaoh would complete the Triple Crown, and I did that just for the reverse jinx theory, <laughs> like, yeah, it, there's no way that's going to happen. and Just get that out of the way, and it worked. So, uh, un- unfortunately, I'm not going to say that to Always Dreaming. I-, I really do think he can win the pre There'll be some, you know, you always have the new guys come along and, and classic empires coming back, and, you know, you- you're going to have some good horses to run against for him to prove himself, but that's all part of the part of the fun you know it's not supposed to be easy hey uh one more for me larry we we're all all in the capital region uh pulling for chad brown and i and i thought uh didn't win the race obviously but that practical joke ran well enough that, that chad would consider moving to the preakness as well yeah i think he's going to pass on that uh i read uh, a quote about practical joke that chad is going to move him to become a middle distance horse i i think that he's a really really talented horse and uh, Chad seems to think that he won't go the distance. So I, I think we'll start to see him as more of a miler, uh, and I think he'll be a very successful miler, and, uh, and hopefully he'll go on and, and do, some, do some good things. Uh, I think Chad is going to come back with a horse named Cloud Computing for the same owner, okay. and I think that they might be looking at the Preakness for him. That would mean no Travers for practical joke, too, if, if you know, everything stays on Chad's schedule. Right, I think yeah. he probably may be looking at the uh, the King's Bishop 
which is the seven furlong race the day of the Travers. I wouldn't be surprised that that would be a goal for him. Yeah, well, distance was the storyline for practical joke going in, and and now with the what you're uh, saying here this morning with what the decisions Chad is making moving forward makes a lot of sense. Larry Calmus, great job as always on the call uh, with NBC, and uh, look forward to the Preakness and on where we go. And before long, we'll see you in beautiful Saratoga. Yeah, yeah, we, we can't wait. To, you know, especially once the Kentucky Derby is done. Uh, you really start that countdown. I mean, there is just nothing like getting to Saratoga, and, and boy, I I am ready to roll. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Great job as always. Thanks, Larry. All right, guys. Thank you.